now we'll see that I can change the slides here as well. So um, my name is Oscar Spock and I will talk about how to set up an AI master thesis with three steps that will boost your organization's knowledge. So who am I talking to you? And I'll see that I can get the next slide. There we go. So I'm an entrepreneur, entrepreneur. I'm a general creative person and I always been liking to kind of uh, destroy things, put them together again. And also if I find something that's not working, I want to try and test it in new ways and see what it can be. I studied computer engineering and um, I found this interest more in entrepreneurship. So I gladly helped Lee Innovation at uh, Linköping University to support students and uh, researchers to take an idea into a company. So during this time, I uh, started over 40 companies, coached over 600 teams, and it was a great experience to see these kind of small things emerge into bigger companies that uh, some of them are flourishing today, which is really nice to see. And I got inspiration myself to actually start my own business together with free researchers in uh, sensor fusion, and that's called uh, Stilero. And as a, as a new company, you have limited resources. So my goal there was to use the force from the university. So I set up four thesis works uh, during the spring of 2017, and that actually built our company and the knowledge. So I had one in design, one in um, hardware, one in cognitive science, and one in uh, gesture recognition to explore what we could do for the future with this technology. And that's, I think that's my, my beginning of actually hiring master thesis students in a, in a way that uh, might be new to some people. And I will talk more about that. Today, I work as an innovation leader at Cybercom and um, exploring uh, the tomorrow of what we can do. So I will ask you to be bold when setting up a master thesis. I will ask you to listen when you set up a master thesis. And I would like you to expand when you set up a master thesis in machine learning. This could lead to some amazing stuff. At uh, the last uh, spring, we had two guys wanted to do a machine learning and AR thesis. And we had uh, collaborations with uh, factories. And uh, then uh, Corona hit and we couldn't go out to these factories to, to do the actual work and put sensors on the machine. So what we did was we actually bought a steam machine and set this, up, set this up in our office with sensors. And what we could see was that we could create machine learning algorithms to predict what the steam machine would, uh, how it would perform uh, in the future. We also put on an AR layer to see this machine from um, another point of view or on another place. You can get these live streams to see how the machine works. Further on, we uh, had a collaboration with Hol Sverige Rient, who's uh, helping uh, Sweden to pick up trash. And we wanted to see what uh, object detection could, if that could help out identifying certain types of trash and how big piles of trash there are in the nature. So um, we got uh, a thesis worker working with this and together with him, we actually found this uh, collaboration and how we should set it up. It resulted in uh, in ways that we could see the trash and different types of trash. And we used an open data set from the internet that we could add into this. So we didn't use our own data in this example. And uh, the results were great. I was a little bit disappointed because they tested it on me and I became 78% normal trash. Um, but it's it's fun to interact with these creative minds. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they tested it out but it gets more better result on actual trash. So looking back to what the, the other speakers said, depending on what data and what you put into the algorithm, you get different results. 
One thing we work with right now is really cool. We have a collaboration together with a company called Glana Startup, who make this hyperspectral sensor and that can see more light than uh, more spectra of the light that the human eye can see. And together with the students, we um, thought up this idea of, okay, what can we do with apples? We started in a lot of other areas, but we ended up with apples. And in the halftime report, we can actually get the ripeness of apples from these images. And we don't know what it will lead to yet, but it, it shows some promising results. Why am I doing this? So I'm a, um, I'm a maker in Cybercom. We're a consultancy company with 1,300 people. And we are in Sweden, Finland, Poland, and Denmark. And we want to make tomorrow happening right now. So we do that by innovating a lot. We have innovation in our backbone. And we also see that we need a future to make these solutions for. So we want to make sustainable solutions for tomorrow. And we always look into creating net positive solutions. So not only net, uh, net equal solutions, but we want to make net positive. And that's actually possible when you look at it in different ways. So, um, and I'm in a department called Innovation Zone. I'm an Innovation Zone leader. And we work in the early stages of projects, identifying, creating concept, and validating concept. And that's usually where master, master thesis work comes in as well, in the early stages, before you actually need to develop it. And then the next step, I leave over to my super awesome agile teams that will develop, uh, develop these ideas and these results that we get from master thesis and the work we do in Innovation Zone. So a master thesis, for me, that's 20 weeks of focus. It's preparation for students working life. And it also is a collaboration with a university between the company and university. And when you think of it, 20 weeks of focus, that's, that's really nice. So we need to find out how we can utilize that power. First of all, be bold and explore new horizons. Ilva talked about this uh, before, like think big. And I, I urge you to do that. We need to kind of leave our small, leave our company a little bit behind, look up, look outside, see what's happening out, out there and what problems or need do we need to face to move on to the next step, to move further beyond our own abilities right now. So usually people set up uh, an, a master thesis with a set solution that you should do exactly this. If you do that, you will narrow the field for the, for the students to explore themselves. So I would urge you to look for the problem or the need uh, in your company and outside what you're facing to get a bigger scope that you can work together. Also, when you prepare your um, master thesis, it's you have to learn and trust the system. So look at university pages, look at the different department pages. You will find documents there describing the process, how you as a company should act and how what's expecting from the student. And, um, and that's really comforting, especially if you who's setting it up could help the students in the beginning as well to know where they should look and what information they need and what actions they should take in the beginning because it's it's a new journey for them as well setting up this master thesis is also you will we have talked about discussing data and uh, what uh, what you want to have in your um, what data you need to have so you can either use open data sets or you can uh, create your own. And the difference in this is if you use already made data sets, either from open source or from uh, collaborating with companies, you will get more specific results that you can use in the end. If you use um, 
uh, if you don't have a data set in the beginning, the stu master students need to create this. And usually the time that comes from these 20 weeks is that the data set will become quite small, but the results will show you in what direction, but you can't make the same decisions that you could with a bigger data set. Listen, add. I always connect the idea with the student's ambition. This is a preparation for the student's working life. So we want to connect our idea that we come up with or our problem and connect that with the student's ambition. What are their st studies? Where are they heading? And how can we connect that into the master thesis work? So if they are in uh, AI for, um, for example, medicine, or if they are in security, that's a big difference. And we might need to adopt that. And that's why it's so good not to have this narrow scope in the beginning, but have a wider scope that you can use and uh, give the students in the beginning. And then they can help narrowing it down for the next step. Connect your idea with your company's ambition. I think this is self-explanatory. You have to have to see what this can give us as a company. What will it, the end results be? And um, look, of, look at your company, what the vision is and where you're heading to connect that also right now, because that will also lead to better results. Lastly, but not least on listen, is to boost with the knowledge from the university. I have this experience from, um, from Still Arrow, where uh, I went with um, my master thesis in uh, hardware uh, the, um, for our project. And we went to see this professor. I went together with the students and we explained the problem and, and the need we were experiencing and what we should look at. And I looked at the problem for about five minutes and then he said, well, but you should do it in this way and this way. That would be so much better. And from my point of view as a, as a startup, that was so invaluable information that I, I don't know where I could have gotten it except from a professor studying this field and been studying this field for 20, 30 years. So you, have, you don't have to have all the knowledge yourself. The student has a lot of knowledge. The professors have, have a lot of knowledge. So use that to boost. Thirdly, expand and. I already talked about um, talking to the student and talking to the professor. So try to build on these relationship. Invite both, the, of course, the professors to meetings and uh, the students to have them incorporated in your daily organization. Then they will be prepared for the working life. They will see how you work and what happens in your organization. It will be much easier for to do the transition for the next step. And you will be, um, um, be more of a mentor for them during this time. Find collaborations. If we don't have any data ourselves, it's really nice to find collaborations to have, um, to find these type of data to test out. So there are a lot of companies out there with data that you could collaborate with to find these results. It's also a good way to, to build bridges between companies or with startups to find uh, a common goal together. So this is really nice and I, I've experienced some, some great things and I, I look forward for more collaborations um, further on. Evolve. We don't stop at the end presentation. When the final presentation is done, we need to move forward. How could we use this? How could we implement it? How can we um, expand it? So usually you want to look at, do we need more thesis work or other experts to look into this for doing the next step? Or could we start just implement this immediately? One thing that's good with the, an AI um, master thesis is if you're using the cloud, it's really easy to connect that results further into your system. So, um, and also depending on what resources you have as a company, the cloud works really well if you need a lot of computing power for some of the machine learning algorithms. So for this, be bold, listen, expand, and you will do great. And I will gladly discuss this further with you later on. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Oscar. Thank you for your very interesting and good presentation. Really nice. Uh, I have a question to you, Oscar. Yes. Uh, what fun and exciting thesis are you doing right now? Can you tell us, or is that secret? Um, no, it's not secret. We do um, we do the one with apples right now. Um, we do one where we look at um, um, what do you say the. We wanted to start with doing AI and machine learning for factories, but we got stuck in the beginning seeing that, okay, they're not really uh, uh, comfortable in doing that yet. So right now we're researching uh, on how we should actually implement it on a human level so that it will become acceptable for them to start using it more. We also look into tiny machine learning so how you do uh, machine learning on really, really small models with low memory and low CPU power to see how we can utilize that on um, maybe, um, well, IoT, for example. We want to maybe do uh, machine learning on the edge level of IoT. Is that something and uh, that then we have a, a, a nice one where we do in puzzles backwards a little bit. It's hard to explain, but we want to see if we can revolutionize how you build stuff if you don't have all the pieces. And we think machine learning could help us do that, find new ways of building stuff, even if we don't have all the pieces accessible. So if you, for example, have, uh, yeah, someone at home have uh, <laughs> kind of removed something or cleaned up without your no knowledge. Hmm. Sounds cool. Could you do that with Lego? You take a picture of the pic, uh, of the pics, or what do you call it, the bits you have, and the the ML will put together. This is what you can build with your, <laughs> your <laughs> with your Lego pieces. Exactly. That's that's that. What was one of the inspiration for this? Oh. Actually, to to see what what you can do and Lego things with machine learning and Lego. There are a lot of stuff there, <laughs> okay. and. Uh, we want to kind of make the, the next step from that, moving on from Lego to maybe, um, what do you say, secondhand stores. Oh. So what could you do with these stuff? Oh, okay. Oh, that sounds that sounds really usable. Will you do it with food also? Take a picture of my uh, my grocery. This is what I have at home. Please make. <laughs> what can I? What type of dinner can I make from this? <laughs> yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and when you say that, is there's a lot of kind of ideas and solutions that you have to tackle. And I know that there are a lot of apps that do this today, that you can actually look what you have in your fridge and yeah, uh, but you drink recipes and things like that. And and that's kind of simple machine learning. But when you when you start missing people, missing things and you want to mm -hmm. change, then, then you have to go to the next level. And I think that's interesting from transitioning from these kind of low level machine learning where you just take how can i connect a to b and the thing is when you can kind of missing or must add something else then then it becomes a little bit more complex and i like that yes last question how do you see i mean do you see when you bring in students do they come with totally new ideas on old problems or old you know Usually organization have, we have done this, we have, uh, well, this is the problem, this is the solution. <laughs> you know, you get into that yeah. type of uh, kind of this problem, we solve it this way. Do you get students to look at it from other angles or, or other perspectives? Yeah, usually the, I, I never tell them the solution. Hmm? So I, oh. I just start with the problem or need. We have this area, how should we solve it? Yeah. And then in the preparation phase before the master thesis were, starts, they usually have um, a literature um, study to look what's in that field. And then we can have discussions on, OK, what's what's the possibilities here? And then we set the research question after that. And usually uh, together with the professor as well at the university. So we are in sync there of what actually is going to be delivered from this. Thank you very much, Oscar. Uh, thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah. Great to be here.